the work that you do, and um, this place has a lot of history with me, and uh, Robert knows some of this, and uh, I heard a lot as well as we were growing up, and I called it blood, sweat, tears, and tears of joy. So I grew up in this area, I came as a seven-year-old to Camden, couldn't speak a word of English, went to school first day, cried, and went home, but then I was happy. I made friends and I lived in um, Judge Street. We actually, my family, uh, paid someone some money to give us a place to live because there was uh, nowhere um, else to One they had sorted, suddenly those, those people weren't picking up the phone calls. Robert doesn't even know that. So we had to find somewhere. So we stayed with an uncle in St. Albans first and then got to Camden. And then for me after that, the real privilege and honor to go on to be the first uh, British uh, Bangladeshi and first Muslim mayor of Camden in 2003, and then the first um, British Bangladeshi was the leader of Camden in 2010, and I was also the youngest mayor in the country in 2003. You can't say that anymore now because it's 20. There was a 22 year old last year with me. So I was mayor again last year in. Um, and just finished last week, so I had like 20, 20 year gap, and it's just amazing. You know, we were talking about aspiration and inspiration and the glass ceiling. If you want something, you've got to really go for it. And don't let anyone say to you, you can't do it, but you do have to put in the hard work. And Camden is a borough of opportunities. So I grew up in uh, Silverdale which is no longer here anymore because of uh, HS2. The block got demolished and my family uh, moved to, um, they moved to Luton. My youngest brother, my mum, and my dad never liked it, so he didn't move to Luton. He went to Bangladesh, which is where he passed away. And my mum hated living in Luton because it's a detached house. And it had lots of space, but not a lot of people going, because here, everyone knew us. So we're on the third floor, everyone knew us, and like in, even people like Robert used to visit all the time, it's like, you know, even for the votes. Are you gonna vote? It's like, you know, so let people that like, knew you yeah. over their detached house, people didn't even knock for the votes. So they probably thought of their Tory votes, Labour people didn't even knock. So mum mum didn't enjoy it, she passed away in Bangladesh as well, um, looked after her family. I went to Netley Primary School, so I don't know if you know, but it's just, Around the corner, so it's on the road parallel, Stanhope Street. That's where the entrance is, and I um, again could speak a word of English. But from there, we went to I went to uh, Sir William Collins, which is now Regent High. So I went from Sir William Collins. I left in 1985 with one O um, So now then it was Regent, then it was South Camden Community School, and was a lot was there. And now it's called Regent High, and when I was leader, we, uh, we built um, Netley Primary School, and we put housing on top as well. And we put, um, we rebuilt uh, Regent High as well. So now it's got two extra, two extra forms. And whilst I was going to um, Sir William Collins from walking there through Summers Town and through um, Mayford Estates, so, as a Bangladeshi, there were skinners around in those days. So we used to fear, we had like a bottle chucked at us. We had, imagine going to school as a teenager, having bottles chucked at you, having uh, eggs thrown at you. Um, it's not the way you want to go to school. So we feared going, because at that time, there was a lot of racism. And there was like a no-go area, almost for Bangladeshi people, Robert Street and uh, Summer South. And then later we all got together as teenagers and made Drummond Street safer. Because one time we got chased to Drummond Street by skinheads all the way from Silverdale. And we were like really fearing for our lives. And then when we got to uh, Drummond Street, suddenly we look around and we see the skinheads running around, what's going on? And then I see all the uh, chefs and all the waiters mm -hmm. behind us. Yeah. And the skinheads saw that, so we realized that place of safety, which is like, now, in terms of drummer street and everything that's happening, it really feels bad for us, but Robert's really working with the drummer street traders to make sure they get more support from 
HS2 and um, as the, so that's where the blood sort of comes into it, the sweats. Because there were times when we were caught by the skin death, we were given, a, as they call it, a kicking, which literally meant blood. And it was my older brother, who's a bit, who's um, three, four years older than me, then he'd really get beaten back where the blood was, they wouldn't stop until the blood was pouring. And the sweat from the running away and the tears. And then we, um, 1984, so there was a shortage of housing in Camden. And <laughs> Robert probably, like, you know, remembers that time as well. And uh, Camden put people into hostels, um, bed and breakfast. And they weren't very good, and one uh, family actually burned to death in uh, Westminster, bed and breakfast, and there was a Camden family based there, and uh, we just decided enough was enough. So with um, Bengali Workers Action Group at that time, now Bengali Workers Association, we decided that we would occupy the town hall. So that was my first proper feat into politics with the big people. So we decided we'd occupy the town hall, and we went into the council chamber and we uh, took it over with our sleeping bags and everything else. And Robert was a councillor and I think executive member, now called cabinet member at that time. And instead of getting the police to kick us out, to beat the crap out of us, they decided not to call the police. So they let us stay and we negotiated and we happened to find uh, lots of um, flats, properties for those people. So it, w it was successful. That was my first sort of. Um, step into politics. And then in um, 1989, we, uh, there was a lot of, uh, racism was still prevalent, and restaurant workers were getting stabbed, beaten up on the way home regularly, and one guy got stabbed on Drummond Street, and luckily survived. So we decided to set up the, and the police was racist as well. So it looked like nothing different now, if you look at the Casey report. It's yeah. not changed a lot. So we decided to set up the Camden Monitoring Group right here. So they were upstairs. In this building? In this building. And we set up the Camden Monitoring Group and we monitored police activity, but we also had a minibus that we used to uh, give lifts to the restaurant workers so they get home safely. And we've done that for a, for a few few years. And then we um, there was also a youth centre here in the basement. And some Bengali young people got um, arrested by the police allegedly for um, the stabbing or something. And we had a solicitor called Imran Khan, and we uh, worked and we demonstrated, and we actually led a demo work all the way to Parliament, and they were actually let off. And that was from the youth centre right here. So this place has a strong history in our hearts, and also like uh, going back, um, and we were upstairs. So again, in terms of the police, after the murder of um, Stephen Lawrence, I was asked by the uh, Deputy uh, Police Commissioner to join the um, Independent Advisory Group of the METS. So i have done that for about 10 years, advising the METS on how to be um, tackle racism within the force. And um, that was quite good because we worked with, uh, at that time, Casita Dick um, was a lead person who worked with us before she became Commissioner. That worked obviously to a small extent if we see what's happened now that they need to still recruit more. And then I think it was 1994, there was a murder of a local white young person called uh, Richard Everett in Somerset. And if you think what happened to the Bangladeshi young people always getting um, attacked, families attacked, sadly this uh, Richard was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's what happened most times, the innocent young people get. Um, in the middle of it and gets um, attacked or get killed. So Richard was murdered and then um, there was a group of Bangladeshi young people that had done it and some of them served uh, prison sentences for it as well. But after that, the Bangladeshi community just couldn't live. They were living in terror. So what I've done was I set up Camden United using football to unite young people. So I took a group of young people from Robert Street, from Summer Sound, and from Drummond Street to uh, Holland. And we, um, the first game we played was against a Dutch team. And most of our outfield players were whites, and the goalkeeper was Bangladeshi. And they were calling, the Dutch players were calling our um, goalkeeper the 
P word. So therefore it's Pakistani. So they're calling, you know, and, and in this country is that racist word they were using. And all our white players stood up. They said, hold on, normally in, in Cameron you'd be calling him that. So we realized that was a good start. And we started having discussions, having workshops. And then Cameron United won lots of awards, local awards. I got the Cameron Good Citizen Award from the council. We got the British Urban Regeneration Association Award for um, strengthening community cohesion. And that got me into working with the local council. And the council leader at that time was uh, Richard Arthur. So I worked with Richard Arthur and then later on Jane Roberts was the leader. She said to me, why didn't you come and join the council? And I was thinking I'm also, and then I started working for uh, KCB, King's Cross Brunswick Neighborhood Association as a trainee youth worker. And there was a course I'd done which helped me with the um, YMCA. And it was like uh, three and a half days a week I would start at work, and one and a half days a week was distance learning study. So as a training youth worker, I'd also be getting my formal qualifications, academic qualifications. And then when I got my um, diploma, then my manager left and I became a um, manager of the youth team. And then when I got my degree, the organization manager left and I became the manager of the organization, now chief executive, and I'm still there. And then in 2002, I um, became a counselor for Regions Park Ward. And uh, it's been an amazing privilege and honor, and I went straight in because of my experience as deputy mayor. In 2003, I became the first British Bangladeshi and first Muslim mayor of um, Camden and also the youngest mayor in the country. And then 2006, Labour lost control of Camden because of the Iraq war and uh, went into Lib Dem Conservative coalition. And 2008, I think I took over the leadership of the Labour group in Camden. And 2010, we won it back. So Labour, then I was leader of Camden Council in 2010. Again, first Bangladeshi. And if you think about someone who came and squatted a flat on Judge Street in 1977, and then like, you know, by 2010, I was the new person of the borough. That's an amazing way to think that in Camden, you know, you're there, it's a borough of opportunities. If you want to do it, you, you can, and you, you are supported along the way. And so many people have been along the way, including Robert and, and others, and um, <clears throat> they're, they're still up. And then 2011, I got um, Order of the British Empire uh, honor from the uh, late Majesty the Queen. Thanks to some people uh, in Camden and uh, Robert as well who highlighted to them Her Majesty the work I've done. So I was presented with that. It was for services to the community and local government. And at one point I was thinking, do I really want to take this? Because it's like it's got the connection of the British Empire. But then I thought, hold on, it's for 25 years service to local government and to the local community, so I accepted it. And uh, I was given it by uh, Prince um, Charles at that time. And Robert and I went to Bucket Palace with my uh, oldest son, who's at Oxford University now. And um, yeah, we collected it. And then um, obviously King Charles is King Charles now. So uh, I'd never been to Scotland before. And I got a welcome from His Majesty to say to go to a, a a reception for South Asian community um, last October. So when you get invited from the King to go to Scotland, it's hard to say no. So I went to Scotland with the invitation of His Majesty the King, and we had a lovely time. And the weather wasn't good, but you know, it, it was fantastic. And then I was, um, again in 2022, I became um, the Mayor of Canada again for the second time, we just finished last week. And when you're mayor, you're a bit like the um, king or queen of the borough. You go around everywhere, and you're promoting all the lovely stuff, and you don't have any headaches of the political, like when I was leader. It's a headache, because everywhere you go, I, mean, I thought it'd be great being a leader, but then we had a changing government. We had the Conservative Lib Dem Coalition, and they cut Cameron's budget by 93 million. 
my cabinet and I had to do that. And instead of thinking the uh, glass is half full with a billion pounds, what are we going to do with it? But I was more worried about the people, about making that three million pounds worth of, worth of cuts, which is where I would have been focusing now of the billion. But it was still a fantastic um, record, fantastic history. But I think Camden is a borough of opportunities, like we were saying earlier. And we have so many people in Camden that are there to help. We want to make sure that everyone, and we were talking about you know, the history of um, lesbianism in, in Camden, the LGBTQ plus questioning community, whatever your background, you know, whether you're from a refugee community. We, we opened our doors for the Afghan refugees and we worked with Hopscotch, who was my mayoral charity, to make sure that all the Afghan refugees that came here were settled here, were happy, were now were actually buying back council properties to house Afghan refugees. And then with the Ukrainian refugees, and now we're saying with Sudanese refugees, we are there for everyone. We are a borough of opportunity, we're a borough that wants to make sure that the people that don't have as much get support. And if someone like me can do it, then I think it's a borough that, you know, anyone can do it. You, you're a great example, you know, in terms of what you're doing there and the way you're using your artwork to develop and then to support others. And like, you know, no doubt, I'm sure you'll have an offer before I love today from Robert there. about your painting, but, <laughs> but I think, again, we are so fortunate to have all these wonderful sector organizations in Camden, like Camden People's Theatre, like Old Iron Art Centre, they would work as association of such, and I say, Camden got the best wonderful sector in the country, and I don't just say that. Over the past year, I've had probably about 450 engagements, and probably at least half of them have been with voluntary sex organisations. So I've seen it firsthand what difference you make, the work that you do to support the most vulnerable. And we've been through the COVID pandemic where I didn't, there, there was no lockdown for me. So I was actually delivering food to people's houses. There's a funny story one day I was delivering because we got a minibus and we were delivering food to people's homes. I come to Drummond Street and I'm delivering food to someone's house and there's a minister from Bangladesh and he saw me and like, Ash, what are you doing? I'm like, delivering food. He's like, no, have you got people to do it? I'm like, yeah, but I want to do it myself. So he's like, you know, wow, you actually do it yourself? I'm like, yes. So even when I was mayor, I, still, I was still doing it because I think in life, you shouldn't change your personality even if you get to the top, you should help the people. So even now with the cost of living crisis, we're still doing it. We're still having to deliver food. We've still got food banks growing. And I know as Samuel Lithgo, they still had a food bank and our BWA was still giving that food. We're giving that food in the community kitchen at Odak. We're giving that food in my community centers. We're giving that food at Shuba Center. Because people still need it. We're still offering advice. Because people still don't know what support is available. The government gives handouts. But if you don't know about it, you're not going to get it. So whatever we can do, we will continue to do to support uh, our people in Canada, because ultimately, what's the use of being rich and mega rich if the people are suffering? And for me, it's always been about that. It's not been about myself uh, or anyone else, it's about supporting my community, it's about inspiring, it's about raising aspirations. So 20 years ago, my theme was young people and diversity. And I still bump into young people who say to me, are you mayor? And that was before I was mayor a second time. They still thought I was mayor from 20 years ago. And I'm like, no, I'm not, but I can still help you. So it's about creating memories for people, supporting them, making sure that you go all the way along. Like, good a lot, you know, growing up, uh, our families were very close. And then he moved away from Houston Street when he's parents moved and he had passed away and then his brothers so we we know the family we support each other and we know that racism still exists but in Canada it's probably more institutional I haven't heard the p-word for a very long time and that's really good wherever we see hate crime we tackle on it you know very strong and we make sure that we get the authorities to work with us so we get people you know whatever background, 
where it was like a few years ago, I think the lockdown, we had that issue with the uh, lesbian couple on the bus being attacked. And we made sure that the culprits were found and they were like, um, action was taken. Because we want people to feel safe in Camden. And we, we should all work together to make sure that no one fears living in Camden. So that's a brief history of it. I could probably go for more, but probably good to just get some questions from you and also some insights if you've got, because obviously you've been doing a lot of history work as well, and you've got history even before I was born or even before Robert was born in the <laughs> 1900s or something, you know. But there's a lot of stuff. So if you've got you know, any questions, then feel free. You mentioned the um, the monitoring group that you yeah. had here. When was that? When what type like? So nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Nineteen eighty nine, yeah, it's, uh, I was only twenty. Wow. So we, we set up the camera monitoring group working with um, I think at that time it was Camden Black Sisters. Yeah. And it was a Southall monitoring group. Yeah. We worked with the Southall monitoring group and then also uh, Sarah who worked with the Camden Law Centre. They helped us work with Camden Council and the Big Willie Workers Association, so we worked together to set it up and then we got this space um, from Camden to be able to do it. And what kind of stuff, like, how did that work operationally? Operationally what we've done was we uh, managed to, uh, I think Shumacent had a minibus, so we used that minibus to um, we had a couple of uh, mobile phones came out at that time, the 07956 numbers from, um, I think it was T-Mobile at that time. We had mobile phones, people would call us on the mobile phones, and we would go and we would pick them up wherever that they were, drop them home, and then we'd get calls from anyone who was fearing racism, who was fearing um, the police, and we would go and watch, we'd go and support them. We had lawyers, like Imran Khan, who's a famous, or uh, Solicitor Still, I don't know if it's a barrack, Solicitor Still, and uh, we would then work with them to, I mean, I kept a young person from going to prison as a youth worker, so I was a youth worker as well from 1989 to 1995 at Shuma Centre. Um, and I worked with one young person over two years as his appropriate adult, going to the Kentish Town Police Station every time he got arrested. And normally it was about fighting, because someone was racist to him to stand up and defend himself. He'd be arrested, not the racist kid. So I'd go to the station, I'd talk for him, get him out. I kept him out for two years, and now he's got a successful estate agent, and he says if I didn't help him, he wouldn't be able to have it. So again, if young people get these criminal records, they can't borrow money, they can't get businesses. So what we've done was we helped a lot of young people to be able to uh, stay away from that criminality, yeah. um, but also to be able to uh, not get a criminal record, so that helps a lot of young people and some of them are really doing well and really grateful for that. Amazing. And was that, was that purely voluntary as well? It was all voluntary. Yeah. It was all voluntary. None of us got paid for yeah. any of it. It was all voluntary work and all, all the people that work with us were all volunteers and like, you know, we used to then fear for our lives getting home. Because the last person who has to then drop off the minibus has to walk home alone. So not only were you uh, helping others, but you had to sort of fear for your own safety. And my brother at that time got a flat in Robert Street. My poor mum was so worried. Every night he had to call home once they go. He used to work in uh, Ambala on Drummond Street. Mm -hmm. So he had to make that walk from Drummond Street to Robert Street. And every night, my, I had to call my mum once he got home, so she knew he got home safely. And a couple of the times, he had saw the young people sitting on his steps, so he had to go around the block, so he could go the other way. And I remember at one time, I got um, young people in Silverdale. I came home, I think I was 14, and they were sitting on the steps in Silverdale, and uh, I saw them, and I tried to run up the steps, and they grabbed me, hit me on the back of the head with a piece of wood. I ran into my kitchen and you know, I was angry. I ran into the kitchen, grabbed the kitchen knife, grabbed a hammer, my brother ran out, my dad ran out. We chased them all the way to Somers Town and um, luckily we didn't hit anyone or anything. And then the police come, 
and one of my neighbours underneath on the second floor was, was racist. She went, yeah, it's all his fault. I saw him, by me, I saw him attacking them, and these girls were shouting and screaming. My, bro my brother, uh, when they came, uh, they, they called him, they said, yeah, we saw him with a weapon, but that day the police, um, they arrested him, put him in the back of the car, but once we told them what happened, they, they let him go. So luckily none of us were arrested, but that was a daily occurrence when we were like constantly attacked. And there's a limit to everything, how much you would say. And we sort of um, didn't let it uh, stop us. We sort of continued and like, you know, um, luckily as time went on, we got to know more people and we uh, started defending ourselves as well. And we started bringing the community together to unite. Them. Yeah, I think now we can say in Camden when we get these uh, young people with um, crime and the uh, youth safety is more about drugs and gangs. It's not, it's not about um, racism. So I think that's a step up. Can I just say a word or two? I've lived in the area since 75, and look at that slide over there. Our Euston Station uh, was done up in 1964. And uh, that was very much the background to what was going to happen in the rest of this area. And there was a lot of squatting to save it from developers. And it was at that time that uh, I'm glad to say the community won. And all these buildings were, were put up by the council. This, as you probably know, used to be the Truman's pub. <laughs> and uh, yeah. at the time, the monitoring group it was occupied by Camden Council for Community Relations. Uh, which no longer exists, but uh, it was a, a very progressive organisation at the time. Uh, so Drummond Street, as we know it now, really grew out from those early days of development. The first shop was Ambala, the uh, Indian sweet shop, which was an Indian franchise. Uh, what Nash hasn't mentioned, uh, as you probably know, it was in 1971 that uh, Bangladesh got its independence from Pakistan. One of the worst things of partition was to throw West and East Pakistan together, which were two completely different countries, not its side of the continent. And it was a very, very uh, bloody.